Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special edition here on NDB Media. Today it's going to be Sunday Night America. Of course, it is America's birthday, America's cry for freedom, the day that America said, we not be a colony anymore, and they decided to take their own uh, fate into their own hands. Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. It is July 4th, 2021, the 245th birthday anniversary i don't know what would you say my illustrious co-host there wait hold on there he is nope there he is but i'm over here yeah yeah there he is i i think birthday birthday's good we'll go with birthday good evening or good morning michael day how are you today it is now good morning i am doing well it is july yes it is and i want to thank you for sacrificing your morning uh, to spend it with us right here uh as uh I, I think it's great for michael to be joining me oh just got the notice from twitch that we're live so thank you everyone whoever's watching us and we are being watched on one of my channels i don't know if it's my personal one or my public one because it both say roger d noriega but let us know who you are and where you hail from we'd love to know go ahead and leave a comment in the chat room you know we'll play it so it is a lot of fun we'll get to that right now I don't know why it's under Nightmare Hunter. It should be Monday Night America. Yeah, there it is. The brand has to be Monday Night America as well. So let's... Oh, that's right. It's Sunday night. So I should have uploaded that one. All right. Very good, Michael. Good job. We see you updated <laughs> that. That yeah, was even quicker than, uh, than I was. Yeah. But that's I was, why. I was semi-awake, yes. Oh, yeah. You, you are always awake. But I'm really glad that Michael is joining us uh, well, this morning for him and evening for me because he has already completed the Ancestry DNA and actually several others. We're going to get to that right now, but we have to get it away. Today's America's birthday. Yeah, we're going to stick with America's birthday. It's a big deal. It's a lot of fun. And you're probably going to hear these loud bangs in the background. Uh, every, it's, it is going and blowing right now. But Michael, you were telling me that in Maryland, Mary's Land, fireworks are illegal. That's correct. They are the only ones that are legally are displays by governments, private institutions, or whatever. But they do not sell fireworks in Maryland. So. But you were telling me that they are legal in the nation's capital. In, How in the nation's capital. Fireworks in the nation's capital. I can see that. Yes, yes. Five blocks away from me. So. <laughs> oh, really? You're that close? I'm that close. Yeah. Uh, well, you're elitist. You're in Maryland, so that's okay. I remember uh, you mentioned to me uh, approximately four years plus that the vice president, well, the vice president elect before inauguration, of course moved in to your neighborhood right yeah just down the street yeah that was um that was very interesting lots of um security and everyone's going what's going on here and then it was made that it was announced that he rented a house not too far away from me about about a mile about a mile from my house that's Um, nothing man that's close oh i know i know they blocked off some streets for a while and you know, did some security sweeps and things. And yeah. Did Secret Service ever come over and say hi? Oh, no, not over to me. No. Yeah, they already knew all about you, Michael. Well, probably, yeah. Yeah, they did. So, all right, fair enough. Uh, folks, as I said just very quickly, I want to talk about uh, today, July 4th. Uh, it is the day that we celebrate. Uh, the founding or the Declaration of Independence, quite frankly. And uh, on this day on July 4th, the Continental Congress adopts the Declaration of Independence. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Continental Congress adopts the Declaration of Independence, which proclaims the independence of the United States of America, the original 13 colonies, from Great Britain and its king. The Declaration, of course, came 442 days after the first volleys of the American Revolution, were fired at Lexington and Concord in Massachusetts and marked an ideological expansion of the conflict that would eventually encourage France's intervention 
on behalf of the Patriots. It wasn't too difficult to have the French join on our side. You know, the love between the British and the French. Of course, in 1765, one of the major items that came in was taxation, and it was the Stamp Act. It was to raise revenues for standing British Army in America. So America was like, well, you don't need to have the army here. Yeah, the king wants it, so so be it. And of course, under the banner of no taxation without representation, colonists convened the Stamp Act Congress in October of 1765 to vocalize their opposition to the tax. With its enactment in November, most colonists called for a boycott of British goods, and some organized attacks on the custom houses and homes of tax collectors. That means I would have been in trouble back then. After months of protests in the colonies, Parliament voted to repeal the Stamp Act in March of 1766. And of course, what continued? Most colonists continued to quietly accept British rule until Parliament's enactment of the Tea Act in 1773. And it was a bill that was designed to save the East India Company by greatly lowering its tea tax and granting it a monopoly in the American tea trade. Well, we know what happened shortly after the Boston Tea Party. 18,000 pounds dumped into Boston Harbor. British Parliament, outraged by the Boston Tea Party, another blatant act of destruction of British property, enacted the Coercive Acts, also known as the Intolerable Acts in 1774. The Coercive Acts closed Boston to merchant shipping, established formal British rule in Massachusetts, made British officials immune to criminal prosecution in America, and required colonists to quarter British troops. Do you guys hear several of the amendments in there somewhere? It's no accident. And of course, they eventually called for the Continental Congress. And then in 1775, we do have the events, as I mentioned, the shot heard around the world. At uh, Lexington and York, or uh, Lexington and Concord, I apologize. To this day, it is unknown who fired the first shot. That's that's right. I'm like, no, no one's taken. No, I don't think so. Yeah, we we don't know, and it, we're never going to know unless we watch the Tom and Jerry commercial cartoon. Yeah, they talk about it, but anyway, that or we get a time machine. One of the two. That's right, and people have been talking about that. Of course, on April 18th, 2025. Oh, I'm sorry, in 1775. Uh, 2025. Okay, is this a prediction, Roger? Yeah, sorry. Actually, in 2026, it'll be 250 years, which America's kicked off the America 250 campaign, which is going to be cool. 250 year celebration in 2026. But anyway, I digress. On April 18th, the ride of Paul Revere alerting the Minutemen that the British were coming. And we all know, for those of us that went to school, we learned the stories, one it by land, two it by sea. And we know that that is the signal that Paul Revere was given based on the lights, uh, the gas lamps, right, Michael, that were uh, placed in the church. Mm-hmm. Yes. In uh, Boston Harbor. So uh, they were ready, and uh, we know what happened. There are a few other little things that happened, and we're going to go and post those details. We're, we're going to get to those, but we've already taken quite a bit of time. Point is, on July 2nd, they accepted Virginia's thing to get it done. By July 4th, everyone voted, accepted it, and everyone signed uh, sometime in August. I believe it was August 2nd, and New York uh, approved it. Somewhere in July, I think the 19th or something like that. So, big days in American history. Today is July 4th, America's birthday. Happy birthday, America. Talk Happy birthday. Michael. Yes. We're going to do the ancestry DNA. Well, at least I am. But I swear, everyone, I will not spit in the cup so you can see it. I may do it like this, but I will be spitting in the cup today. Oh, I can't. I just had a drink. <gasps> oh. oh. Oh, I blew it. Totally, oh, I, Roger. I did, didn't I? You did. You. T I was going, what is he doing? But I didn't want to say anything. All right. And all your ancestors were behind you going, what are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, that's already about eight minutes ago. And no, it's actually about ten minutes ago because it's when the program was live. So I have to wait 30 minutes, I, I believe. 
Mm, I think that was it. Oh, or, you ruin, or you ruin the test. Oh, man. Way to go, blockhead. Well, that's me. I'm the blockhead. But all right. Fair enough. Folks, what we're going to do is I've taken the time to take some images. Yeah, thank you. Just knock on wood. It's, it's about right. I'm going to uh, be showing you some images of what the box looks like. Here it is. Uh, I took the time to plan for this episode like I did for tomorrow's episode. But it comes in a box, a shipping box, and when you open it up, this is what you get. This is for Ancestry.com. And I purchased the DNA kit along with the health. So it will eventually let me know my health traits, what I could have down the future. If this thing tells me that I might get diverticulitis, I think it's a little... It would be scary, Roger. Yeah, but I already have it, so go figure. The Pope had surgery on something very similar, diverticulitis today. So, But anyway, you get a super secret code that shows there it's a barcode, unique to everyone. You're going to have to need, you're going to need those numbers later. That's why I'm not showing them now. But again, this is what it looks like. I'm going to show you the images. We're going to start on them right now. And I think Michael will be sharing with us uh, some of the things that he had to do, but the box is it's really simple. Uh, you got stuff on the back side, and I'll show you those images in a little bit. But I'm going to activate it now, the view, the share screen option, forgive me, and this is what we're going to do right now. There, Oh, sorry, not that. That's one of the other websites. But there it is. This is what it looks like, AncestryDNA.com. Uh, this is the box that I've been showing you. So when you finally open it up, there it is. You just slide it off. And I know you can see me, and I'm just showing you it slides off. Look! That's what it looks like on this image right there once you slide it off. So, oh, there it says right there, traits. So I, I did choose that box. All right. So we go on to the next one. When you actually open up the box, this is what it looks like. And yes, folks. That is my navy ring to the left. I didn't clean up my desk very well. But this is my old, old, old wooden desk at home, which is has one more season left in it. But when you open up the box, there it is. Welcome to a whole new world of personal discovery. And as the box says, you probably know some of your family history, but what you can learn from your DNA can make a profound impact on how you see yourself. Thanks for choosing us to learn more about the story of you the Ancestry family. Michael, does this look familiar? Is this the same box that you purchased a year ago? Yeah. Yes, it is. Over a year ago, that is the box I got. You not only did it, but you already got your results in pretty quick time, huh? I did. The, um, Ancestry was the second one that I had done. Um, and I, I got them back, all results with my DNA matches, which is why I did it, um, in about five weeks, five, six weeks, something like that. Um, and um, all of them uh, that I did, I got back in approximately that amount of time. Um, it really all depends if they're really busy and if they've run a sale. Um, they didn't have a sale when I put in my first one, so with which was which we'll talk about later. Twenty three and Me, um, and that came back. That came back even faster. Wow. Okay, fair enough. This is actually my second test. The first test, which took forever, the final results came back sometime in March by saying, "Sorry, there wasn't enough DNA or whatever. Or just sorry, we couldn't get the results." You rat bastards. I returned this back in October, November of last year. So I was rather disillusioned. Even Michael was telling me, yeah, they're taking way too long, dude. Way too long. Something's happened. I'm like, well, I don't know. And then, of course, Michael said, well, they were having a special. It was a significant special. I, I, I remember what I paid for this. I don't think it was 100 I think I paid $69. Mm -hmm. Would have been. Yeah. It was for the DNA and the health traits. But anyway, this is the box when you open it up. So, And I will be doing additional videos. I am going to also get 23andMe 
and I'm also I'm thinking I might do my heritage. Michael, you've done uh, Ancestry.com, 23andMe, and did you also do my heritage? I also did my heritage. And people ask, why did you? I just had a friend of mine post on my thing, says, well, I got the same results for all three of them. But, you know, all mine were all the same, too. However, I was trying to find DNA relatives. I was looking for my birth father, who I did not know who it was. And that's why I ended up doing three tests, because I was each to each test is independent and they don't most of them don't share information. So if someone does my heritage, you know, and that's it, um, they're not on anything else. So I got very few hits with 23 and me. I got actually one close relative and that was it. And I go, that's not enough for me to go ahead. And so I did ancestry and I got a few more. Um, so that's when things started to work. My heritage, I got a lot of the same. Some people had done my heritage too. So those were kind of just the same. Or they were on my mother's side which I already knew who my birth mother was. So I just was trying to look for birth father relatives, so. And without spilling any beans, which one worked best? The most um, of my father's was ancestry. Okay, fair enough. And knowing that Michael it's made that very clear to me as he's sharing with the audience and i want to thank you for that michael because this is rather personal and it made it means a great deal to me as well as to the audience that's why i'm doing this folks there's a little bit of fright because you learn things now i the family my two siblings my two sisters and i two years ago decided to well a year ago we decided to find our stepsister my father passed away and I thought about it. We should have done it. He passed away. Uh, ooh. Oh, damn. In four days, it's two years when he passed away. His birthday is July 10, but he passed away on July 8. But uh, I saw him, I think it was on June 30th. And it was the last time that I did see him. And I thought about it. it was he he was it was said he was leaving us. And I mentioned to my sisters we should try to do a DNA, but yeah, they didn't. It was not the best time. Which I told them, uh, will there be another time? But okay, don't want to be a jerk about it. But uh, we didn't do it, and I regret it. And now that I'm doing this, I'm going to have my sisters do theirs as well. And we're going to reach out to my mother as well. So, But I'm not talking to my mother because she doesn't know who I am anymore. And I scare her when I visit her. Even though she knows who I am, my sisters say that she asks for me all the time. But when I go to see her, she doesn't know. She's actually scared. She doesn't recognize me. So it's been a long time since I've seen my mother. And I don't want to cause that. So I'll just have my sisters go and uh, perform the test, which we will do today. But anyway... Be that as it may, we're going to go on to the next one. When you open up the kit, that's what you see, and you pull out the little pamphlet, and there it is. There's a little pamphlet, and it's it's a fold-out. I've already read that part. When you open it up, there it is, the instructions. Very simple. Activate your kit. You can do this on a mobile phone. Download the app for easy activation, Ancestry.com forward slash DNA app. It's available on the App Store and Google Play. You can also do it on the computer. I've had Ancestry.com since, my goodness, I think the 90s. And I've just, well, when they started up, I've had it. So I have an account with them. And my tree has, I think, 300, 400 people. So, but anyway. Uh, but there are, there are some guesses in there, but we'll get to it. You have a unique activation code, which is located outside of the spit tube. That's what they call it. So... In, in about 10 minutes, I will be able to actually do the spit now, so forgive me. But, whoops, sorry, I skipped ahead. Do not skip this step. Activating your kit with your unique code is the only way to get your DNA results. Well, of course, for your records, especially if you're collecting multiple tests at once, record the participant name and the activation code from the collection tube. 
You can write it there at the very bottom if you'd like, where my mouse is there, and in the activation code. So the fold out continues. Do not eat, drink, smoke, or chew gum for 30 minutes before giving your saliva sample. Here it is. We're going to back up. Yeah, we're, we're going to back up. I, gosh darn it. I knew I had to do something, but I was so thirsty. Uh, in about nine minutes, I'll be able to do this part. So you have to spin in the tube, and you know you have to all the way up to that line. And I thought I filled that line. It says, do not overfill. Well, they didn't get enough the first time, so I don't know. Then you have to release and shake. It's really easy. Replace the funnel with a cap. Tighten to release the stabilizing fluid. So then you have to shake the tube for at least five seconds. This will ensure your sample mixes thoroughly with the stabilization solution so our lab can best process the sample. Then you have the collection bag and you put it in the box. So this is the little fold out. And there it is, the back of the folder. I covered up the activation code. Obviously, it's unique. And, well, you know, it's unique. So I wanted to cover up that code. So now that you pulled out the fold out, this is what the box looks like. You can see there's the collection bag. And it has some language on there. It says, in, uh, you really can't read it because the collection bag is on top of these items. It says, insert cap tube into bag, seal the collection bag, put bag into return mailer. Don't forget to activate test online. Yeah, well, duh. So, you go ahead and remove the collection bag, and then you have your Ancestry DNA sample kit, which is on the left. And then you have the first class return service. So, when you pull them out, there it is. This is what the sample looks like. There's the stabilization fluid, which I'm circling. And then you have the spit thing. And this line right here is where you're supposed to fill your saliva to. So then I covered up the code as well on the first class, the first class return package. Once you're done, follow the instructions. You put that in there. And that's really it for there. So. I can do this in about seven minutes. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I will be able to do that shortly. I am embarrassed and I apologize, but I am going to get this done today. So, Michael, the reason uh, you went to Arizona this past year was, I believe, to meet family members, right? Correct. I am. Um, and you I, did meet quite a few, didn't you? I, I met I met a half brother a half sister wow. and a um, stepmother my birth father's um uh first wife so that was that was kind of cool and uh, i yeah. and i keep in contact with them i actually my uh half sister just texted me just before the show and i texted her back saying hey i'm gonna be doing uh something online with a friend about uh ancestry so i don't know if she's listening or not but um you know if you're there just write something or maybe you want to keep uh, anonymous because i am a little strange so i don't blame you uh someone was watching on your page i now uh everyone who's on our youtube page thank you for joining us they're watching as well as our twitch page on ndb media but if you want to leave a comment please let us know if you're on my personal page uh roger d noriega Due to the security, I am unable to see your comments. So if you want to head on over to the public page, Roger D. Noriega, or facebook.com forward slash NDB Media, there it is. We did get a like right now. And, of course, someone is watching on the NDB Media page. So it's one of – did you did you hit the like? Uh, no, no, I did not. Yeah, someone's watching, and they hit the like. So it's an administrator or an editor – Maybe they'll make a comment. It could be Rosalind. She was all over me for midnight. So who yeah, knows? Could be. could be. So we're we're get, oh, here. We go. We have the comment. Ah, it's Mr. Da Da Roberts. Thank you for joining us, Da. So uh, this is what we're doing right now, and I'm going to be able to do this in about five minutes. So thank you, Da, for the like. I do thank you for that. 
And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate the comments. So um, I, I know you can see down here, there's really nothing in the bag at this point. But um, I think, what what's this? Is this a napkin? Oh, yeah. They're napkins. They gave me little napkins. So I'm, I'm going to open up the DNA kit now. And you, you didn't see a very good image of it, but I'm going to do it. Oh, you know what? I should uh, use a sterilizer right now, huh, Michael? Uh, probably. Now, did you want to make our pictures bigger and take the overlay off right now so they can see it more when you're doing it? I appreciate that, Michael. That or, actually yeah, would be a good idea. Or make you bigger if you can. <laughs> really? Really? You, yeah, are really. you sure? I don't think people could tolerate that. Well, but, uh, no, forgive no, me no. a moment. I will. And, and I appreciate that, Michael. That is a good idea. Um, I think I used too much. So, But now it's, wow. <laughs> it's like I put my head in a waterfall. <laughs> I think it's very shiny. <laughs> yeah, I think I did a little too much. But that's good. I am sterilizing this, and uh, well, it's funny that you would say that, DA, and thank you for that. Uh, we have it understood. Okay, that was across the street right now. That one's down there. Fireworks are going crazy right now. I don't know if you guys can hear them, uh, but the one that I said was across the street, there was a concussion blast. Those are the Mexican fireworks, forgive me. <laughs> so we're close. Uh, DA, we do believe that we have a line uh, somewhere along the way. I do know that uh, I do have the Noriega family shield from Spain. Uh, not a blue blood, but we are a family. We are a distinguished family in Spain. And the Noriega family is from Asturias. It's a city in the north of Spain. So we are, just by name alone, I'm Basque. <laughs> so that makes me a separatist. So mine would come back 90%. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah, whatever, DA. That's funny. You should do it, though. You, you, you really should. But I don't think it's going to be 70% Norwegian. No. If anything, yes, I'm Basque. Well, I'm going to find out. I do know that I know people get very mad at me and they say it's racist. I'm like, well, how can you say it's racist if I'm saying it's me? I always comment about my beak. I have a Persian beak. And I'm very famous at work for saying that whenever someone's in a conversation and I comment or whatever, oh, I'm sorry. It's the Persian in me. <laughs> my beak got in the way. You know, stick your nose out of it or get your nose out of it. Yes, for me, it, it is. So uh, I know some people are going to get offended by that. I apologize. I know I have Persian just because of the Moorish. I, I may not have any Moorish, really. Uh, but from the north, I am Basque, and I'm looking forward to confirming that. And uh, we'll see. So I'm going to be able to do this test in about three minutes, which is really kind of cool. So I'm not going to discuss all of you, but I'm going to open it up now. So you can see what I'm doing. I guess I'm going to make it a little larger, right, Michael? I think or my, I might have to log off because I think it's going to make me large. Oh, there you no, go. How, got how's that? Yes. That's good. Okay. I thank you. So I'm removing it now. And in this, I'm going to cover up the activation code. But there, there's the tube. And this is the solution, the stabilizing solution. So um, kind of cool. Just it's just a stabilizing solution which you put on there. So uh, this is the spittoon, for lack of a better word. <laughs> and I have the code on the back of this, but the code is also on. Oh, oops. So this needs to be in here. And uh, I, based on the timer alone, because if it's thirty minutes to be precise. While the intro music was counting down, right, Michael? Mm -hmm. I did take the drink, did I not? Or was it before? I thought it was a little after, but... Were we already live? No, right? 
I thought we were, but maybe we weren't. But it was the, during the countdown. It was it was close, yeah. Thank you, General Joshua Dalton. Just gave us a little bit of love, so I appreciate you guys are watching right there. Let us know. Uh, D. A. Roberts says one of my favorite characters in the book was Bob's Jean Le Cago from the book Shibumi. So we are now thirty minutes and thirty seconds. So that's why I said earlier about three minutes when it was really about two. Um. It was right here when we were about to go live when I took the drink. So it's good. And all it was was ginger ale. So if if I come back, ginger, go figure. But anyway, this is going to be it. When you have the tube, am I supposed to remove it? No, no, right? Oh, no, no. That's the agent down there. It says, fill the tube with saliva to the black wavy line. Fill the tube until your saliva, not including bubbles. Oh, I think that's what it was is at or just above the wavy line, which is right here. It's easy. That's less than a quarter teaspoon. How easy was it for you, Michael? Actually, it was easy. Um, Don't I, thought, I, I thought it would be a lot more complicated than it was. I mean, it was more just reading the instructions and going, okay, am I going to mess this up? <laughs> I was worried about that too. And I think what I did is, I got to the wavy line, but I think the bubbles were at the wavy line. So there wasn't enough. So I, I think that's what the issue is. So I ask you to forgive me. I'm going to start this now. I actually have quite a bit of saliva now. So there's the first one. Wow. I don't know. It might have already filled up, but uh, we'll see. We'll do a little bit more. Sorry. Didn't mean to scare you people. Maybe I should dim the lights. Wow. Surprisingly, there are no bubbles on this one. Ooh. So I'm above That's the good. line. It is, huh? Wow. So once you get above the line, it's, it's only a quarter of a teaspoon, folks. It's a teaspoon. It really it isn't very much. So, hola, where is my kit quest? Okay, cousin. Oh, that's I'm your cousin? Glad. Yes, okay. that's my cousin. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Thank you for spending time with me. So, Patty, we really have to do this. Now, General says, no glare off your head. <laughs> Cover the action. No, <laughs> so I should be doing this. That's what he's telling me. So I've already filled it up, as you can see, above the line, the little wavy line that I've got above it. And uh, it says, don't overfill, so don't go all the way to the top. So following the instructions, I had to remove this cap. And then this, remove the funnel from the tube. Screw on the enclosed cap tightly to release the solution that will stabilize the DNA in your saliva. So doing that now. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look at that. While I was twisting down, it, it broke the seal and the stabilization liquid went there. Tighten to release stabilizing fluid. You will know it works when the blue solution from the cap has emptied into the tube. So there it is. So we're, I'm going to go back to the instructions real quick. Forgive me a moment. And uh, let me see. I'm going to go right here. Yes. So that's where we are. I am now going to go to the next page. Okay. Shake the tube for at least five seconds. I don't want this to be an obscene gesture right now, so forgive me. Do it off camera. Oh, I'm doing it off camera right now. Yeah. No glare off your head. Hold it. Uh, Patty, yes, you are Noriega. You are, definitely. Uh, gee, okay, I'll check my Facebook messages when I have a second. Sure, DA, I will. So I've shaken this, and now you'll notice it's gone from pink to a dull color. So it's mixed. This will ensure your sample mixes thoroughly with the stabilizing solution so our lab can best process your sample. Now, at this point, I have to place it in the collection bag. But if you'll forgive me a moment, I need to write down my code on this. I could take a picture of it, but I still need to write the code. So it's Z5. Just kidding. <laughs> Look at my <laughs> Like, dude, don't be stupid. That was Michael's reaction. No, I was going to say, see no evil. 
Oh. That was going to be my response. And then you started laughing. I go, nah, I don't need to say anything. Man. Oh, that was funny. I'm sorry. So mm -hmm. I, you ruined my right joke. I sorry. What a shock. Have we met? So uh, let me see. Zaz, you're Mexican. Really? <laughs> you're funny, prima. Okay, so I'm writing my code down, and that's it. So I've done that. I've already uh, mixed them together, and at this point, I'm not going to place it in the collection bag, so I'm going to go back to this. Forgive me, the large view. It's going in the collection bag. I'm going to remove this tape. Now, normally, just because I'm that way, I always put the tape back in there. But, no, I want them to do this right. <laughs> but I always send it back. So I'm... S yeah, that's it. All right, I'm sealing this. And as they say, prima, ya estuvo. <laughs> it is done. So here it is. And now, as I mentioned, the box that came with it, it's already open. All you have to do is then put it inside the box. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Nefarious. I appreciate that. Uh, you're with one of the programs. Yeah, he's going to be a guest pretty soon. Okay, very. that's cool. Appreciate it. Zaz Culebra! <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> we're going to put it in the box now at this point. And, uh, oh. Didn't happen the first time. Okay. So you just got to make sure to fold the bag and everything in. And you, you close it up like this, put these in, and then this one. And then lo and behold, you have another tape right here to seal it. So I'm pulling that one. And now... We're sealing this bad boy. And there it is. We're done. So Ready my test. Mailing. Yes. Now tomorrow is a normal day of business. So we're okay. No, it's not. Are you post offices should they closed. Should, but today's a holiday. It, it, yes, but Monday holiday, remember. Right. I just didn't know that they carried over. I thought it was we can oh, ask we can you know ask what? It's a Sunday. to uh, tell us if that is true. Actually, I because believe they are, yeah. At the post office, so. Yeah, I, you're right. I, I believe they are closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the box at this point, put everything away. I'm going to save a little bit of information, but this is it, folks. I've done it now, and uh, it's, let's see. Post office is closed, my Diana. You're right. I should know this. The county's closed. So, and nefarious, thank you. The Fed is closed. Folks, as soon as I get my results, I will be going live on this. And I'm also going to be doing the 23andMe. So, prima, all kidding, uh, and all banks are closed as well. So, yes. All kidding, uh, prima, uh, I, we, we've got to do this. So, this is really cool. Um, I want to thank uh, Patty online because I've reached out to many, many family members. And I don't know if you've had this issue, Michael, and this is what I want to talk about real quick. I talk, Every time there's a family gathering, an event, whatever, I go and spend time and I say, hey, look, I need five minutes with you or five minutes with you on the family line. And uh, thank you, Prima. Appreciate that. <laughs> She's going to send me the saliva tomorrow. All right. Yes, there you go. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I've not committed any crimes. So uh, they're going to know now. But they, I think they already have my thumbprint, so it's done. Uh, but thank you for that, Patty. I'm, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's all right. So I'm going to mail this little bad boy on Tuesday. I'm going to drop it off at the post office. And then when I get the results, I'm going to go and do so. But I want to give a shout out to my cousin Patty because when I asked her for information, she said yes. I said, you know, I could give you a password access. And she said yes. Now... It's not that I misjudged, but I misjudged. Every time I, I give someone access, five years later, nothing's done. Patty added a significant amount of information to the file. And, uh, oh, hey, 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 hey. 
You didn't drill me for five minutes. You drilled me for hours. Hey, we had nothing else to do, okay? Let it go. <laughs> I almost used the Italian, didn't I? Hey, had nothing else to do. Uh, but, Patty, you were so awesome in filling in quite a bit of you know, missing information. And we still have more work to do, but, Patty, I'm looking forward to this. We are going to do this test, and uh, I'll be talking to you about it this week because I do want to get it done. As you know, Alma, Rose, and myself, my two siblings, uh, Louis, indirectly, um, my third sibling, we want to find our stepsister. So, so we half-sister? Uh, uh, half-sister half or stepsister? I'm not sure which. It, well, if it, it's from your father, right? Yes. Then it would be a half-sister. Okay, half-sister, yes. Oh, that's right. We're married. I apologize. Half-sister. Yeah, that's right. Half-sister. Because uh, if it was a stepsister, you won't find DNA matches. So. Yeah. No. Both likely. No. No. But uh, it is there. So let's do it. Half-sister. Yes, yes, we are looking for her. So I'm really happy I was able to get this done. And, uh, Patty, I'm not kidding. You did. And uh, I appreciate the story. I drove you for five. I drove you for hours. I'm like, well, you were pretty cool about it. So I took advantage of my cousin. i sorry. I did. So... I've got all the stuff in the box. I'm probably going to throw it all away now, but I'm going to keep a little bit of information as I have the code. I'm going to go on to Ancestry.com and activate the code. I would probably do it on computer now, but I don't want to do it because it already has some of my personal information. It's not fair. So I wanted to share with you guys how easy this really is. Now, this is my second tape because the first one did not tape. So I didn't have to pay for this one. They sent it to me. And I'm really looking forward to finding out the results. So right now, before anything else, uh, and I will do them live. Yeah, I will. I will do it live. As soon as I get the results, I'm going to ask Michael to join me. I'm not going to look online until we do it live. I think that would be kind of cool, huh, Michael? Just write the – oh. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying because – yeah, you may. Yeah, you you will get an email notification, maybe. But if you're as bad as I was, I looked every single day Did to see if my me. results had come in, and I found the results online before I got the email confirmation. So you did tell me that, and that's why I yeah. was looking every week. Yeah. and it got to be once every two weeks, and then yeah, you were like, "There's a problem." I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know. And the dimension, I got the notice. Sorry. So my cousin says, hola to you, Michael. Uh, Michael hola. and I met. Almost out. Yes, I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, Michael and I met back in the 2000s. He was a producer, uh, well, is still indirectly, with Starship Farragut and with many other programs. And uh, I met him in 2010 in a convention here in Los Angeles. And uh, we've been in contact ever since. And when he shared with me over the last year and a half what he was doing, it really got me going on it. And we communicated a great deal last year. And then Michael finally told me, he said, Roger, I scored. I said, what do you mean? And I'm paraphrasing, of course. And Michael said, uh, it looks like I have some matches. And I was stunned. I was really excited for him. And then Michael went through. Well, Michael, you want to go ahead and yeah, you, you yeah, let I, uh, me know that there were possibles. There were possibles, but no one would get back to me. And it took a while for people to get back to me. And um, or they didn't get back to me at all, which I was upset with. I had second cousins that got in contact with me, but they really couldn't help me because they really didn't know who my father was. Um, you know, they could see genetically where I tied in with the family, but they really couldn't figure out specifically. I needed to find somebody that was at least a first cousin, if not someone closer. So that's what, that's what took the time. And then when I found some people that said they were first cousins, they didn't get back to me. Um, I, I had to, I guess you, you were talking that Patty did your uh, family tree? She added that, to it. Yeah, she added to it. That's how I started 
figuring out who I thought my father was, and I built a family tree from that. And then I would look genetically to see who I, if it worked. And I had found one person that I thought was my father. I actually contacted somebody um, in that part of the, of the family tree. And um, it was the wife of the person that I was genetically um, uh, compatible with. And so she was telling me about this guy and I really thought I had found him, but then I dig, dug deeper into some of the other parts of the tree and he didn't fit. There was a whole line of people that he was not related to. And I went, Oh, so he can't, he couldn't be my father genetically. So I had to start from scratch, but then, um, a close relative from 23andMe got back to me that hadn't gotten back to me in three months. And Could I found out more right in, oh, okay. Can we stop real quick? Michael, sure. you'd mentioned that you had, and several people who are commenting, I don't think we're here earlier. Would you remind them that you actually tried all three tests? Yeah, I did all three tests. And the reason that I did was because I didn't get much uh, action, if you wanna say, on my father's uh, side of the family on 23andMe. I only got one that was close. So that's why I decided to do two others to see if I could get some more. So, but anyway, um, so the 23andMe one, it said it was a first cousin or closer. So she finally got back to me and I had gone on to Ancestry based on some information that she had put on her profile. Um, on 23andMe, and it ended up, yes, I was, Patty, I was adopted. Um, um, and so I had some false information. And so that's what messed me up, finding who I thought was my father, because I had taken it literally what she had written on her page, because she was adopted also. But she said she had found her birth parents 20 some years earlier. But she had put something on there that messed me up. You know, I forgive her. Um, but um, ends up, long story short, um, it ends up my father ended up being her half brother. So she ended up being my half aunt and not my first husband. Wow. So, you know. That was what was interesting. But then when all that got figured out, I went back to Ancestry. That one line of genetics that I couldn't figure out worked perfectly. So then I did some other searching and um, long story short, I had to go online and look up my, my potential birth father's name who had died in in uh, the early 2000s so i knew he was gone and so i said i've got to find some other relatives because the close relatives online aren't getting back to me um i found contact information for my birth father addresses phone numbers and i went woo and then i found out that he had had a, another son, which I did not know about at all. That was news to me. I only knew about one daughter he had had. And I found out he had had another son. And I went, oh, had the same name he did. That made it easy. So I did some more information, found some phone numbers, and I actually called one of them. And that's when I first talked to my stepmother. And um, she didn't she didn't believe it. I mean, you know, she said that can't be true. <laughs> and I could totally understand. I told her, I said, I know. I said, I'm looking for someone to do a DNA test to see if I'm correct. I said, I'm not sure if I'm correct, but it looks like I'm correct. And and so my uh, half brother agreed to do the DNA test with me. And I still remember it's like I was telling Roger. I was looking every day to see if his results came through to see if he matched with me. I and I looked one morning and there he was showing that he was my half brother. 
um, and my uh, another half brother on my mother's side had already taken the test. And so I, I asked him to do it so I could compare. So I would kind of know what to expect. And it ended up this new half brother was more genetically compatible than my half brother on my mother's side. So that was kind of strange, but I, I called him up right when I got the results and he went, Michael, I just got a text saying that my results are in and you're a close relative. And I said, we're closer than you think. We're half brothers. <laughs> That 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 is cool, Michael. That is absolutely awesome. Look at the comments in the chat room; they're appreciating this. Michael, I appreciate you for sharing this. I know that you and I have talked about this for at least about two years now. Yes, yeah, about I, two I, years I, now. Mm -hmm. I think this is the first time that you actually uh, say anything publicly, and I've been very careful about that. I, I didn't want to ask you uh, to say anything because I just I don't know, but. We we can share a little story, if I may. I I, I asked you about him earlier, but in, in the time that we have left, Michael, and I don't mean that metaphorically. I mean, I have a clock right here. If you have any questions for us, let us oh, know. Please post them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, please. But uh, when Michael told me in the middle of the year that he was coming out in December, in my mind, it was done. I was like, okay, I missed opportunities to go to the East Coast to see Michael. I had just flat out blown it. And miss glorious opportunities. Won't get into the details. It's a waste of time. It, it got to the point where I felt my word meant nothing anymore. So Michael said he was coming over in December and he was going to be here for a week. And I said, Michael, I beg you for an hour. Work me in for an hour. I don't care what it is. I will get to Arizona. I'll either fly in. I'll drive in. I'll take Amtrak. I don't give up. I didn't think about it, Michael. Amtrak was my last option. But he had finally booked his trip, had everything, and he mentioned to me, okay, I'm going to get in about midday. I will have the afternoon, and we can spend some time together, which I thought it was awesome. Screw that, baby. I left at 3.30, 4.30 in the morning <laughs> to make sure I would get there. And uh, Michael, did Roger drill you for hours as well? <laughs> Two years. Uh, ha, ha, ha. You're funny. Plus. <laughs> but... uh uh, it, it was really funny because it was done. I told Michael, it's done. I'm going to be able to see someone else out there as well. And I was looking forward to seeing like three people out there. But it only turned out that I saw Michael and someone else. But uh, it was all set to go. And then I tripped the sensor on my car with like six days to go. And it said, engine needs to be fixed. And I lost my mind. The car had tripped. It was giving me problems. And, well, when I told Michael that was going on, I said, Michael, I don't care. I'll rent a car. I'll do whatever. But it was getting close, the timing of being able to rent a car, whatever. I remember at one point Michael said, nah, it's not going to happen. He's not going to make it. And I even told him, I will be there. And I told him straight out, I will be there. And, uh... I think the day before, it, it, because I guess the car had to travel 100 miles for the sensor to clear up. And I told, Michael, Michael, the car's great. <laughs> it's ready. And I think it really did surprise Michael. I said, hey, I don't have the check engine light on. And sure enough. And then another Peter, uh, the big dog who does a sports program with us, said, Raj, just put enough gas in your car to get to the border, just to Arizona, because you're going to be surprised how cheap the gas is. I hate my life. Gas was three something here. It was two oh five crossing the border. It was crazy. Yep, no, no POS. Wow, <laughs> none of that. And it was great. And uh, I went out there to meet Michael. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time, and then he hadn't had a meal yet, and nor had I. Says, hey, you know what? Let's go walk down. There's a lot of places around us. No. It was COVID. Everything was closed. We walked around for a little bit. I said, screw it, Michael. Let me go get my car and let's go see. There's got to be something up north. He says, I'm paying $1.79 for E85. 
You want me to look my messages now, DA? I'm not going to do that. Sure. But okay. So we just head north away from the airport. And we see a place or two. And it was whatever. And then I, I looked over and said, hey, there's an IHOP. And Michael said, stop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right. We did. We turned into the IHOP. No one was there. When we drove in, we parked. We're like, is it even open? Turned out it was open. But just as we were beginning to walk, two or three other cars arrived right after us, which was kind of funny. But we went in, and Michael and I were having a wonderful conversation. And, Michael, this is what's really cool. Take it from there if you would, please. This was neat. Michael and I were, were talking about, you know, uh, I was asking him, so who are you going to meet tonight? What's going on? So our food had already arrived. The waitress was pretty cool, too. But the conversation hadn't gotten deep yet. Michael, go ahead, please. And then the conversation was getting deep, and Roger was asking a lot of, you know, questions about the test, what to expect, you know. Oh, because I'd already taken the test myself. At that time, yeah. And what do you expect? And then, um, and then you were. You were asking me about who are you going to meet, when are you going to meet them, et cetera, et cetera. And then as we were talking, um, a young guy came up to us and said, excuse me, but I was overhearing your conversation. And so long story short here, um, he was looking for DNA relatives also. He and, was adopted. Yeah, he was adopted. Right. And so he didn't know much information. And so he was planning on taking a DNA test. So he was starting to ask me a lot of questions and asking Roger because he had just taken his. And well, I, mean, uh, I, I want to say something right off. Okay, I what? was trying to talk to the kid and he was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. So anyway, Michael. <laughs> And, and Roger, I'm you're the star of the show. I'm trying to keep you as the star of the show. You're funny. No, I'm not. If the, you're the star of this story. What was so funny was I was trying to make a connection with the kid, and I got blown off by this kid. And I commented to Michael when he walked away. He says, dude, you're both adopted. Duh. There's an instant connection between the And yeah. I told Michael, you have a new friend. <laughs> and sure enough, but that's a little bit later in the story. But thank you, Patty. I do like to eat, but I almost crossed to 2.32. I am at 2.33.2 as of today. So I will have lost 18 pounds probably by tomorrow from uh, early May. So it's accelerating again. It was stuck at 15 for a while. Michael, please continue. I interrupted you so much. No, no, that's fine. No, it's, it, it's more fun with those kind of stories. Now, who said you were allowed to drink? You're supposed to not drink 30 minutes after you take the test. Ha, ha. Nice try. No, no. I already did it. Thank you. Okay. Well, I tried. I'm um, thirsty because it's very hot still. Even though it says 72 degrees, it's an oven in here. Yeah. Um, so, so we left, and I ended up meeting the next – well, as Roger said, COVID. Um, I, I also have a lot of friends that live in Arizona, so – I was trying to space out my trip, you know, I mean, because I knew that meeting new siblings was going to be very stressful. So I wanted to kind of hook up with some friends that lived in Arizona that I, some of them I hadn't seen in decades. And so I had scheduled some appointments with people and sadly, um, three of them had either COVID or they had major symptoms of COVID-like sim symptoms. And so I had to cancel a bunch of uh, um, meal appointments with uh, some of my friends. And uh, that was not, that was not fun. That kind of, I, I was starting to get very angry and like, why did I do this? Why did I spend all this money? Um, you know, and I mean, I really felt bad. And so I, um, so I called, I called up, um, called up my new stepmother and just was venting to her. You know, I was going to meet her on Sunday and, uh, you know, I was just venting to her, you know, all my friends are, you know, blah, blah, blah. She goes, well, she says, um, your brother is over here right now. You know, maybe he can come and meet you early. So 
he ended up coming over. And so we met early instead of meeting on Sunday, like we had planned, he came over and uh, we hung out together on Friday. And that was really cool. That was cool to meet him finally after just talking to him on the phone. So, so we met and had a good time. And um, Saturday I met my uh, half sister and then Sunday I met up with my brother again and his mother, my stepmother. Um, and he took me to our dad's grave. And I told him, I said, you know, I don't know what I'm going to feel. I mean, I didn't grow up with him. Um, he is my dad, but, you know, I don't know. I have no idea. So I was, you know, so we went out there and we got to the grave and um, it started to get to me. And I was surprised at how emotional I started getting. And my brother noticed it. And he said, I'll just leave you alone a minute. I'll go over here and sit at the, at the uh, little bench over here. And I mean, he was really nice about it, but I was surprised that it really got to me. It just, I, I wanted to cry. I it think your just, comment is like 30 seconds late. That's all. Well, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, it was, it, I, I was, I was really surprised. Um, and then, then I talked to my brother for a little while after that. And, um, then we went and that's when I met his mother. Um, and, um, you know, it was, it was something, but, uh, yeah. So I met two of my siblings, um, and my stepmother, uh, one of my siblings, uh, sister, uh, did not live in Arizona. And so she um, had been visiting Arizona two weeks before and she couldn't go back because of her work schedule. So she had said that she would, she would come out and visit me, which I go, oh, well, that'd be kind of cool. So she actually came out um, and I got to meet her too. And we went to some of the sites that were open in DC, which were not many. Um, but she was here for almost a week. And um, he's going to have a, oh. <laughs> but well, um, forgive me, knowing what just happened, I had an abundance of that right now. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It yeah. happens, unfortunately. It, uh, it does. Yeah, so I, I that's why I went out. Michael, yes, right now he does. Michael, how did you get out there? And I don't think I asked you that earlier. Uh, that's why I was, that's in I Arizona. Was, yeah, I was born in Arizona, and I was adopted from um, my parents out here that were in D.C. So my adopted mom flew out to Arizona to get me. So that was my first flight when I was a little baby. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember when this, or were you, uh, how, how young were you, Michael? A week or two. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, it's funny you say that. My oldest daughter, who is high-functioning autistic, she claims that she remembers the day that she was born. She remember, She says, I looked up at you, Dad. That is crazy. Her brain does work differently, Michael. And it's just funny when you mention that to me. It, it, mm -hmm. She claims that she remembers the day she was born. It's amazing what the mind can do. I doubt it. But yeah, it is. It is, it is funny. But uh, I just, I, yeah, that's just me getting in the way. Yeah, Michael's over in Maryland right now. So how did your adopted parents feel about you searching for your biological? Well, I didn't, oh. I didn't. Find, okay, I'll go. I'll go ahead. I didn't know, I didn't find out who my adopted, uh, my uh, birth mother was until after my adoptive mother died. So um, I basically got a phone call three years after she had died saying, would you like to know who your birth mother is? And I went, yeah. And so that's how I found out who my birth mother was. When did you know that you were adopted, Michael? I suspected it from elementary school. 
Oh, but I yeah. did not I did not find out for 100 percent sure. And I'd even done some adoptive searches before this, but I did not find out for sure that I was adopted until the night that my adoptive mom died. Wow. That's when I overheard a conversation I wasn't supposed to hear. And that's when I knew for 100% sure that I was adopted. Wow. I don't know if you shared that part with me, Michael, and I want to thank you for sharing that. It's very difficult for you to do this. Uh, you're, you're putting yeah, it out going there. crazy. Uh, let me tell you, there's quite a few people commenting right here. And based on the numbers, there's actually quite a few people watching. And I want to thank everyone. This is, I thought it was a good idea. Michael has actually been giving me a hard time. What? No way. Yes. Okay. You see that that's the little bit of the delay. She's talking about the conversation that you overheard. Mm -hmm. It says you guys can write a novella. Uh, well, it's funny you would say that, Patty. <laughs> Uh, Patty, I want to, on a side note, there's a novel that is going to be out in the next month, month and a half, and it's called The Nightmare Hunter, Uncanny Valley. The main character is a character called The Nightmare Hunter, and the character's name is Roger Noriega. <laughs> I don't have to write a novella. <laughs> it's already being written. Uh, I can't believe it, but anyway... Lord have mercy, you are starting a reality show, Arch. <laughs> uh, it's possible because Michael also did the 23andMe, which I'm going to go to that screen now. Forgive me. Uh, the 23andMe. Oh, actually, if I may, forgive me. Uh, let me let me do this, Michael. Uh, I, I messed up here. There it is. This is my screen. It doesn't reveal anything other than here it is. Kit has now been activated. And you'll notice it says sample received. Obviously, it's not. It's grayed out. So this is clear. The kit has been activated as of today. So this is what Ancestry.com looks like. So the other two are MyHeritage, which right now is $59 on sale. <laughs> How original. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, I, I'm not writing the book. Someone else is, thank goodness. Isn't that true, DA? My DA, you're responsible. Say it. Anyway, my heritage is on sale for $59, normally $79, so that's one that you may want to look at. It's a hot DNA. It ends in one more hour. Oh, that's funny. That is funny. All right, so who knows? I might end up getting that one as well. And then you have 23 and Me. Now, Michael, we were talking about this. The detail can be a bit different, right, in the, in the uh, report. Slightly, slightly. A lot of it is uh, all my three are very, very similar, um, but each one kind of does different things that the other ones don't do, um, which I found interesting. Um, and, and especially with Ancestry, their family tree part is wonderful. Oh, yes, um, yes. Wonderful. And what I liked is, you know, when you get your DNA done with that, if you have your family tree up and other people that match your DNA have it up, it will automatically match you and you can just say, who are all my relatives from my great, great grandmother and go boom. And you will see all of the ones that fall in if they have built their family tree. And you can see exactly where they fall in to your family. There are three family trees that I know of now that uh, have similar relatives. And I know one of them belongs to my sister Alma's husband's nephew. He has a tree, and a lot of names obviously connect. My mm -hmm. uncle, Rudenciano, we call him Rudy Santana. He is my mother's brother, so my uncle. He has a significant family tree, and he was doing it by hand, as was my mother. I don't have that information. It was lost when my mother became very ill. My uncle, 
obviously did a tree on Ancestry.com, and it, the detail is, like, right on. So he did some stuff. So I know that one's probably going to light up as well, and I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I believe there's someone else that also has some connections. But I, I, I can't wait to see how far it goes back. On my father's side, we only go to great-grandfather right now. On my mother's side, and my grand, my maternal grandmother, I, as I mentioned, I was able to go back to, uh, what was it? 1422, 16th generation. Uh, I have uh, my maternal grandfather uh, from my mother's side. But what was interesting is his son, my 15th great-grandfather, his wife is two years older than his dad. So I go as far as 16 generations, 22, 14, 22. But the 15th generation, the wife goes to 14, 20. Wow. Wow. Different times. Uh, I did not get much of a chance because I was just so happy to talk to your mom at the time. Um, but I, I did uh, speak to some people. Look, no one wanted to really talk about that when my father passed away and the times that we got together. I got commitments from them to go over the tree, but uh, I haven't had a chance to follow up. She's talking about her mom, my tia Anita. I... And I think I told Patty this when I went to the funeral, the services for my father, because he was, he was cremated. We were up near the front, and I know people were coming in, and I turned around, and I made eye contact with one person, and that was Patty's mom, my aunt. She just, she knew it was me. I knew it was her. I went to the back, and I sat behind her in the church. And uh, I reached around to give her a hug, and she just held on to my arm. I, 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 I would jokingly say it was a vice grip, but it was a familial grip. And I know what all of you, you know what I mean by that. I hadn't seen her for so many years, and... Uh, yeah. Uh, Patty's mom is my father's sister. So that's that we're first cousins. So, yes, I am looking forward to going over very soon and uh, we're going to see what's going to happen. But I just want to finish this part of it. 23andMe has ancestries and traits, which is what I chose on ans uh, Ancestry.com. This is 23andMe, $99. If you want health and ancestry, which I believe as do I. As do I. I spoke to your mom twice after. And I haven't called her in a little while because of COVID. But that's my fault. I I spoke to your mom at length, Patty. It wasn't, hi, how are you? We spoke for a while, twice. But anyway, uh, it's the other aunt that doesn't answer. But that's need to hear another aunt. The Health and Ancestry Service is $1.199, which gives you some extra things. But, Michael, would you explain to us what the 23andMe and the Plus membership is? The Plus membership in 23andMe gives you more health reports than just the basic one does. Uh, 23andMe does research all the time. Um, they actually sometimes ask you to answer some health questions um, to further on um, figuring out DNA relationships with health. Um, so with, if you get the, um, plus membership, you get extra reports when they are done. Um, I got the, the plus for the first year just to see what it was like. Um, and I get a new report of some thing they have figured out 
sometimes I, I'm glad I know, and then sometimes I'm not glad I know. Um, We've talked uh, about uh, that. Yeah, about what, you know, what things. I mean, I was shocked at just the basic reports when I got them. And, you know, it, it said like, you might develop such and such between about the age of such and such. And I go, I did, you know, and so it was, it was kind of scary in some parts and it's like, and, but then other parts, I was glad it said I was not susceptible to other, you know, awful stuff. But, um, but now since I have found, now since I found out who my birth father was, I got his health history, you know, from the family. So I kind of know, I know kind of what everything makes sense. Um, some things that I have, I got from both sides of the family. Um, so that explains some other things why I might have gotten it more severe than they did. Um, but you know, it's, it's really all of what you want to find out. As I said, I was adopted, so I wanted to find, I found my birth mother. I wanted to find my birth father. I really did. Um, and I mean, some people just care about where they're from. Just get the basic stuff because you'll get, you'll find out where your DNA says that your ancestors came from. I mean, if that's all you want. I mean, and if you don't care, don't do it. I mean, yeah. that, it's as simple as that. I mean. Yeah, you know, Patty's a Noriega as well. So, uh She's also Basque. She's she has the family line from Noriega, so she's uh, from Asturias as well. I don't know if she knows that. I don't know if I've mentioned that to her, but I have followed the family flag, our coat, all the way back to there. Uh, she was born. Uh, no, actually, she was Figueroa Gonzalez. I apologize. Yeah, but Noriega grandfather Noriega so uh, yeah anyway she is from Asturias you didn't but I'll send you some saliva <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you Patty I really that's why I'm, I'm like yeah okay I hear you so Patty this is something that I would really love to do and you and I have uh, that familial connection so I will be talking to you about this this week which I think is really exciting Michael, you revealed a lot more than I expected you to. You actually revealed a lot more. You've shared a lot with me, Michael, and you still surprised me this evening. Um, I want to thank you for that. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to watch this. They're going to learn a lot of you, and they're going to respect you even more. I mean, they do now. Oh, there it is. Here we go. Her name is Patty Figueroa Noriega. Gonzalez is my husband's last name, of course. Yeah, of course it is. But yeah, she is an Oriega. You can tell by the uh, the commentary. It's very sharp commentary in the chat room. I would love to do a program with Patty. Uh, I, I know she would. She, we just got to find the right time and stuff. Uh, Surprisingly, she's quick-witted, has a sense of humor. So hopefully, but she's shy. So who knows? Maybe she'll be. But look at that, Michael. Oh, Patty, I told you about my seminary brothers. They are my extended family. Well, Michael did not attend the seminary, but he is my brother in, in many ways. He is family to me. A lot of people, eh, F it. Michael is family to me, and uh, it's just the way it is. So, yeah. So I, I really appreciate She says, Michael, it was a pleasure meeting you. Yep. Oh, uh, sure, Patty. Yes, I would love to hang from here. Uh, yeah, you know what? You're right. Do you know who was talking to Eduardo Quesada Escandon today? That was me. I was on his program. And she says, welcome to the family, Michael. Yes. <laughs> and it is. It is. It's done. All right. Well, we're good. Uh, we actually went over quite a bit. I figured we'd go about an hour, but we did go over even beyond that. Michael and I do apologize to you. It is 1.19 in the morning out there. I'm try I didn't want to know that. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not going to work tomorrow, so. Nor are you. Do you no, go to I'm work not. tomorrow? Yeah, no, you're not. No, I'm not. Mm -mm. Who is Michael Quesada? I said Eduardo Quesada. 
from Channel 34, the newscaster that was on for 28 years on Channel 34, Eduardo Quesada Escandon. You know, the anchor for Channel 34 at 6 p.m.? He does Cronicas Quesada. You should check my page. I, I went all uh, I went all zombie fan on him. But, yes, all kidding aside, I appreciate that, Patty. I know she's telling you that, Michael. Thank you for being here tonight. I, I This was great. This was fun, Michael. Uh, I thank you for that. And this is why we're doing it. On America's birthday, it's always about where we came from. And I thought it was cool to do this today as a little bit of a testimonial as to where we came from. So I think next time around when uh, I do this again, it'll be when I have my results. And then I will do the other ones as well. 23 Me and then uh, My Heritage. Because with my luck, the last one I choose in whatever order, that's the one that my half-sister used. It doesn't matter which one I choose. It's it, That's the way it is. So she says, just because my last name is Noriega doesn't mean I it doesn't mean I know Quesada. He was on the news. Ask your mama who he is. But anyway, yes, Patty, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Patty. Night, night. Yes. Uh, we good. We're done. Michael, I want to thank you. I'm sure I'll speak to you tomorrow. But for now, I thank you again. Um, I thank you for sharing, Michael. It's Hey, no problem. It was really good. You made tonight's program. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sunday Night in America, July 4th, 2021. <laughs> the 245th birthday of America. Check out the commercial uh, with President Whitmore about today. Did you see that Budweiser commercial, Michael? I did not, no. Mm-hmm. It's, on my, it's on my page. It's have to look at beautiful. That. Yes, it's from Independence Day. Oh, my goodness. I posted it. It's the one where I mentioned it brought a tear to my eye. It really did. It's good stuff. But for Michael Day, I'm Rogelio Noriega. I want to thank you. Peace. And remember, folks, we're in this together. We have differences. But we're in this together. And if we just remember that part, we can get through this. But for everyone else, I want to thank you, and we will see you guys on the other side. Peace!